Our next recipient is Mr. Rick Loomis, a Pulitzer Prize winning photojournalist who has spent much of his career embedded with the U.S. Marine Corps in the Middle East. A 1994 graduate, Rick has shared his immense talent with other WKU photojournalism students as a faculty member in the Mountain Workshops in Kentucky, a long-standing WKU photojournalism tradition. He has presented, lectured, and shared his experiences at universities across the nation and is recognized as one of America's top photojournalists. Please direct your attention to the video screen as we honor the extraordinary work of Rick Loomis. A Pulitzer Prize winning photojournalist with a genuine compassion for his craft, Rick Loomis has mastered the art of connecting the eye to the heart where subjects are never objects. He's, he's very empathetic. I mean, I think you're, to be a great visual journalist, you have to, you know, you, you gotta be tough and you gotta have a, sometimes a hard veneer because you see horrible things that really no other people should see. And, um, and it's tough to do, but you know, I, I think he, he, he never takes any of that lightly and he does, he's very empathetic and he feels what his subjects are going through. And he, I, I think there's an emotional bond there that allows him to, you know, notice the nuance and, and again, at that moment, capture the great picture that really portrays what's going on, you know. Um, you know, he, when he worked on, you know, the Seven Billion Project that, you know, when he, around the globe and just, just some really, you know, tough subjects there, but you can see, you know, he really treats people with dignity, he treats them with compassion, and, and it comes through in his photography. A turtle-loving youngster growing up in the Sunshine State, Loomis's father encouraged his son's curiosity and love of nature and is responsible for buying Rick his first camera. While attending high school in Florida, an internship with the Palm Beach Post cemented Loomis's career choice. After graduation, he worked part-time for the Post while attending community college until being told he needed a real degree from a real school to further his career. That's when the budding photojournalist found his way to Western Kentucky. When I got to Western and I was away from home, I really had experiences both inside the classroom and outside the classroom that shaped me in, in ways to become, you know, the person that I am today, you know, more than most things. I mean, it was like my parents and university, and that, you know, and that was it. And it was, you know, not the entire experience. It wasn't all about photography and here's this f-stop and here's this shutter speed and here's how this lens works. It was kind of, it was that for sure, but it was also here's how to be a good human being. And I think that's, you know, that was more valuable than anything. Mentor and former professor David LaBelle remembers the humanity he saw in the young WKU student. He understands that, that this business, it's, it's not about him. It's about the people that we're serving. It's about the people, stories that we're telling. And he's, uh, he understands that quite well. And he wants, you know, he, he, and he cares deeply about people. He's, um, you know, he's had enough uh, hardship in his life, which I think sometimes is required. He's had enough hardship in his life to understand what it means to, when he sees people in hardship, whether, you know, they're grieving over the loss of somebody or just a, a difficult situation financially. Wherever they are, he, he, he understands it. And I guess that's what compassion is, is looking at somebody and not only feeling sorry for them and having empathy, but, but having a desire to want to help them and to want to make their life better. After earning a Bachelor of Arts degree in photojournalism with a minor in Latin American studies in 1994, Loomis joined the staff of the Los Angeles Times. His portfolio includes a month covering the aftermath of the 9-11 attacks, accompanying U.S. Marines as they invaded Afghanistan, embedding with U.S. troops in Iraq, later Fallujah, and continuing to monitor the situation in Iraq, documenting conflict as a war photographer. Colleagues credit Loomis's optimism and resourcefulness for getting them through the trials of covering war. We, we teased about him. When he went to the L.A. Times, and he went the first time he went to Iraq, uh, the reporter that worked with him, I think, was a little concerned because he was, he was pretty green. He hadn't been at the Times very long. And when he came back, he said, you know, he would want to go with this guy anywhere in the world. He said, this guy can do anything. He can jump from a plane. He can, he can scuba dive. He can hotwire a Jeep if they needed to do. And he is that kind of a guy. He's a, he's, he's a person that truly 
that doesn't see obstacles. He sees hurdles. He sees hurdles and he gets over them, uh, but he never sees obstacles. Rick is also a very skilled mechanic. Uh, when we were in Baghdad after the invasion, we stumbled across um, Uday, who was the son of Saddam, um, had kept a, uh, a garage full of luxury cars. And we, we had no way, we were walking around, we had no way to get around. And we were looking for a way to get around and there were all these Mercedes and BMWs. And Rick figured out a way to siphon gasoline out of uh, one of the cars that didn't work into one of the ones we thought might work. And he just found a hose, sucked it out, almost made himself sick, put it in there and got gasoline and we managed to get it started and got a little ways before it died. And then he figured out a way to get a dune buggy, one of uh, Uday's white, big, nice white dune buggy going. Got that started uh, by sort of um, jump-starting it. And we drove for a little ways with that. And then it stopped working. And then he convinced some soldiers to let us tie up to the back of one of their Humvees. And we just rode around Baghdad being towed by one of the Humvees and got where we needed to go. His coverage of war earned him the Robert F. Kennedy Award in 2013 and 2014. He's also received the Hillman Prize for Photojournalism, the Scripps Howard Foundation's National Journalism Award, and the NPPA's Photographer of the Year Award. But it was a series about the world's oceans in decline that earned him a coveted Pulitzer Prize in 2007. LA Times Deputy Managing Editor Colin Crawford remembers having the honor of informing Loomis of his award after finding him in the newspaper's parking garage. So I go, I'm coming to you. So I go out to the parking garage and he goes, hey, look what I got. And he's got a, like a Ferrari or Tesla or something where we've got a, one of these cars we're looking, you know, reviewing. So we're taking it for a test drive. So he goes, get in. Oh, okay. So we get in, you know, the car's this far off the ground. And he's flying around the streets of LA and he flips through the Second Street Tunnel, which you've ever seen, it's in all these movies really well lit. And he's going about 100 miles an hour in the Second Street Tunnel. And I'm in my head, it suddenly flashes on me. When we die, you know, up until five minutes ago, it would have been senior executive at the LA Times, parishes and fiery crash. Now it's gonna be Pulitzer Prize winner and some other guy, parish and fiery crash. <laughs> Needless to say, I didn't tell him till we were parked. I really think you just work. And then if something good comes of it, that's great too. And, you know, to win a Pulitzer, you know, it's still kind of like shocking to me. I guess in a way, and it's been, you know, seven years now, I guess, and I kind of st still, it's hard to fathom, but it, it opens doors, I think in ways, it earns the respect from, you know, my peers and my bosses, and I think that's, that's great. I'm sure it's afforded me opportunities that I wouldn't have otherwise had, you know, and I appreciate that. Loomis continues to cover his passion, the environment, and war, and never misses an opportunity to pay it forward, teaching and lecturing across the country. He serves as a faculty member for the Eddie Adams Workshop and the Mountain Workshops in Kentucky. He's married to fellow Los Angeles Times photojournalist Liz O'Balin. I feel humbled and I feel grateful and I feel honored to be one of his teachers and to be his friend. I think he's just fascinated by what's out there. You never know what's out there, and I think he lives by the motto that there's something new out there every day. All you have to do is just go out there and find it, and he does. 2014 WKU Hall of Distinguished Alumni inductee Rick Loomis. Oh, that was kind of hard to look at. <laughs> so embarrassing. But if anybody runs out of gas, I can, I can uh, siphon, your, siphon for you, get you some gas. Uh, greetings, uh, WKU family. I'm only standing here right now because many people along the way took the time to care, to nurture, and inspire. A lot of you guys are sitting right there. Um, when I graduated high school, my internship at the Palm Beach Post turned into a part-time job working at the newspaper's photo lab. I was pretty excited to be there, I admit. I started junior college in Florida that same year, thinking I would get a two-year degree and work my way into a full-time staff job at the Palm Beach Post. To my surprise, when my bosses caught wind of this idea, they promptly set a date to fire me. The reason, they says, that they didn't want anyone sneaking in the back door. If I wanted to be a legitimate photojournalist, 
I needed to go to a, quote, real school with a real photojournalism program. I didn't necessarily agree with them at the time, but without much choice, I deferred to my bosses and set out to find the right school. A road trip from Florida to Kentucky in 1998, or 1988, sorry, God, I'm older than I thought I was, um, brought me here to see if Western fit the bill. From the moment I first stepped foot on campus, I realized that I had not only found the university that I wanted to attend, but I'd also found a family. This rings so true today as I gratefully receive this honor, not just in the presence of my mother, my wife, and her family, but also in the presence of my mentors who directly shaped my career. There's Mike Morse, who built the photojournalism program from scratch right here at Western, and Dave LaBelle, who taught me more than just how to good, shoot a good picture, but how to be a good human. And to Jack Korn, who said in a phone call to editors at the Los Angeles Times looking to make a hire, I'll try to do your accent. Well, you can't go wrong with Loomis. He's a hard worker. And with his utterance of those words, I landed my first and only job as a photojournalist. There are others here too, and without you, I certainly would have made the journey I've made. I stand here humbled by this year's other honorees, Colonel Mickey Riggs and Doc Livingston, as well as the list of prestigious and influential people who've already been inducted into the Hall of Distinguished Alumni. When Dr. Ransell first told me that I was to be inducted, I read about Mickey and Doc and thought there must be some mistake. I mean, I don't even have a nickname. <laughs> well, I did have a couple of nicknames in college, but I'm not going to repeat them here on stage. When I look back to my time here as a student, I couldn't ask for a better experience. Tuition was $900 a semester, and that was out of state. My rent, of course, played to Mr. A, somewhere out there, I saw you, uh, was $117.50 a month. That bought me half of a one-bedroom apartment that I shared with Chuck Wing, another photo student. That house, by the way, has since been flattened into a campus parking lot. Chuck and I did a lot of growing up during our time here, and I cherish all the memories that I've made and the lifelong friends that I've also made. Western Kentucky University helped establish my core values, and I'm extremely proud of my roots here. Bedrock journalistic traits like ethics, reliability, and trustworthiness all came from here. In newspaper photojournalism, everything I do has my name printed right underneath it. But it's not just my reputation that's on the line each time my name is printed, but that of my newspaper and also this university. So every day when I wake up to do my job, I try to honor not just where I work, but also where I came from, this place. So once I became established in the field, I came right back here, returning to the university to lecture, but also to coach the Mountain Workshop where each year the, fut the future journalists that will soon represent WKU out in the field come to hone their craft before venturing out into their careers. I use my vacation time to help teach the workshop because I want Western students to leave this university with our tradition of excellence pumping through their veins. This tradition of excellence I'm talking about <clears throat> is, why, is why you find the legion of hilltoppers around the country holding down the top positions in this field. I have the utmost respect for this university and for its passionate, dedicate, dedicated educators. And I hope that one day, when Liz and I have children, they would choose to pursue their education here as well. Again, I'm, I'm humbled by the accolades. I salute my fellow inductees and will work every day to honor this distinction that has been bestowed upon me. And I'd be remiss not to thank Tracy, Barbara, and Cheryl for all their help and all, everybody else who helped put this on. The presentations are amazing. Go Big Red. Thank you guys. You know, there's a little bit of a theme going on here with faculty mentors and people who have helped to make these terrific individuals so successful. And I see it in a music department, I see it in a photojournalism program, and I know I see it in the ROTC program, and, and you'll hear more about it in just a moment. Uh, by the way, James Kenney, who